and now give the floor to the representative of Lebanon. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you for holding this debate. And I would like to thank the briefers yesterday, Ms. Rosemary Di Carlo of DTP DPPA and Ms. Ursula Muller of OCHA for their statements. Mr. President, on Monday, we celebrated Martin Luther King's Day. It's so fitting to celebrate his birthday the same week of the debate on the situation in the Middle East. Everything that Martin Luther King believed in and fought for is on display in the Middle East today. Civil rights, human rights, justice, nonviolence, equality, and non-discrimination. All these issues present the most difficult challenges today across the Middle East and are devolving into violence and conflict with dire consequences. We have in the region today the largest humanitarian crises and the largest refugee influx in its history, but the smallest chance for peace and security for its people. The situation in the Middle East is presenting a difficult challenge to the international community and to the United Nations. The conflicts are many and multiplying, but most importantly, there are violations of the United Nations Charter and its principles, and in total disregard to international law, especially international humanitarian law. Take the Palestinian issue, for in instance. The situation, and as you heard yesterday from the briefers and most members, is dark and getting worse by the day. I am sure you all heard about the total despair of the Palestinians from the OCHA briefing to this council. What can one expect from a people who have been living under occupation for seven decades, where their human rights, legal rights, civil rights, and their rights to their land, water, and dignity is taken away from them? What kind of life a people live when their cities are described as larger prisons? The United Nations Special Coordinator, Mr. Madinov, when talking about one city, such a city, Gaza, said, we are always no more, than, mo no more than two, three days away from war in Gaza. What kind of future the Palestinians have when youth unemployment is 60%? And one in every two Palestinians, as Ms. Ursula said, needs humanitarian aid. These are desperate people, and desperate people do desperate things. On the political level, they have no horizon, no hope for peaceful settlement. The two-state solution has been em emptied of every essential element of a Palestinian state, and all final status issues, the basis of an equitable solution to the conflict, have been dismantled by the Israeli unilater unilateral actions, like annexations, which will deem the two-state solution an impossibility. The expansion of the settlements, confiscation of land, and the Israeli actions in Jerusalem makes it impossible for East Jerusalem to be the future capital of a Palestinian state. This situation is leading to not only despair, but also to loss of faith in the international community and in peace. The pessimism of the Palestinians was captured in a survey by the International Committee of the Red Cross when it found that 52% of the Palestinian millennials believe the conflict will never end. This is an urge, there is an urgent need for a different path a different construct, a different page in the Middle East. The status quo is not tenable anymore. In Lebanon, a new government headed by Prime Minister Hassan Diab was formed last night after three months of a political crisis and a wave of demonstrations never seen before in the history of the country. The new government, dubbed as the Salvation Gov Government, is facing a major challenge to get Lebanon out of the current crisis and is counting on the support of all the friends of Lebanon in the international community because the stability of Lebanon is important for the region. The new prime minister promised the demonstrators of working to fulfill their demands. The new government formed a committee to draft its policy statement in order to win the confidence vote in the parliament. The situation in the south is calm as the United Nations reiterates but Israeli violations of Resolution 1701 and of Lebanese sovereignty and, and territorial integrity continue unabated. The Lebanese Defense Forces recorded 2,620 violations in 2019, including air, sea, and land violations. These violations are against international legality, and they keep the situation in the south of Lebanon tense. Air violations in particular terrorize the Lebanese population on a daily basis. Mr. President, the situation in the Middle East requires this Council and the international community to unite around the idea that 
And as my German colleague yesterday said, that international law is not a menu a la carte. The Council needs to implement its resolutions, whether on Palestine or Lebanon or in the Golan Heights and other parts of the region, for this region to know peace, justice, and security. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of Lebanon for her statement.